This is a Story and Clark reed organ that was purchased by the previous owners in 1973 from an antique store in Prescott, Arizona. It played quite well at that time, but now it doesn't make a sound. Inside the case, you can clearly see the serial number. There is a date stamped on the Vox Humana that says 1885. However, a bit of research shows that this was made a little bit later than that. With some help from the Reed Organ Society, we finally tracked this down to being a style 101. Inside the back of the case, you can see the 101 in chalk in the inside of the wood. However, the name of the stops doesn't match the normal Story and Clark names. Later, we figured out that this was made by Ann Arbor Organ Company under the name Story and Clark. Ann Arbor Organ bought out the rights to Story and Clark sometime after 1899, and the names of the stops matched those shown in the Ann Arbor catalog. They continued to make this model organ at least until 1902. Taking off the back panel, the organ looks in pretty good condition. However, when I remove the key slip from the front, things are a little bit different. Some of those pieces shouldn't be there. It wasn't too bad to take the upper action out of the case. And it was a simple matter to remove the stop action. Below that was the keyboard. And then we start seeing the dirt and grime and the damage that had occurred over the last hundred years. After removing the couplers, we can finally see the reeds in a row in the reed beds and the mutes that open and close to enable and disable certain banks of reeds. There are two rows of reeds, one in the front and one in the back. Although there does not appear to be much damage to the reed cells, they are dirty and all the felt is going to have to be replaced. On the bottom of the reed pan we see each individual valve or pallet that controls each note. The soundboard, which is made of spruce, has a number of cracks that will have to be repaired. The pallets are numbered with a pencil so that we can get them back in the same order. Now we've removed the lower action, which includes the billows and the air reservoir. The joint between the air reservoir and the foundation board was attached with hide glue. This has to be separated. Fortunately, hide glue can be separated using hot water and a little bit of time. Okay, so here we are in the garage with most of the major components taken apart. The case is pretty sound, so I don't have to do anything taking the case apart. This is the reed bed where the reeds go in and that part will not be taken off. And the base that everything sits on had to be unglued from the bellows so that we can replace the bellows cloth. And we've got uh, little bins of parts and more parts and a whole pile of parts in here and more parts there and coming around here we've got more parts the uh, stop mechanism the keyboard uh, various pieces of the frame that had to come off and the backs over there in the corner and that's it. So, next project is going to be taking the billows cloth off, measuring it, putting new on, and then cleaning up the reed pan and doing everything that needs to be done there. Unfortunately, there was water damage on the foundation board and that caused delamination of the plywood pieces. This would cause vacuum to leak air from the edge of the board into the long rectangular opening. So a new foundation board had to be made from modern plywood. Before removing the billows cloth, a number of photos were taken to understand how the folds in the billows cloth material had to be done, how it was attached, particularly at the corners, also how the corners were folded over and in what order the layers were built up at the corners. The new cloth had to be applied in the same way to make sure there were no leaks at these fold points and corners. Take photos of everything, make measurements, make notes. All of the material inside the billows and the exhausters appear to be original material. Originally they used billows cloth on the valves rather than the more traditional leather. This was presumed to be a cost cutting measure and I will replace that with the more traditional leather. The billows cloth was carefully removed using a heat gun very sparingly. 
The material was saved to use as a template for the new material to be applied later. There was more water damage at the bottom of the boards at the front and back of the air reservoir. Fortunately, these boards were able to be saved using a lot of clamps. The repaired boards will certainly hold a vacuum now. So now we have all of the material removed and the boards are all repaired and refinished where necessary. The old billows cloth was used as a template and new cardboard stiffeners were cut and glued to the inside of the new exhausters. It helps to have two people when handling all the material and the hot high glue and assembling. The top of the air reservoir will not be glued to the foundation board. Instead, it will be sealed with high quality leather. All of the openings were temporarily sealed over with blue tape. And now it's time for a test. The air reservoir holds a vacuum for several minutes now. Here's a before and after photo of the exhausters and the air reservoir. The metal frames around the pedals clean up quickly with a bit of sandpaper. Sections of new carpet were cut out and inserted in the pedal frames. In the next video, we'll deal with the upper action. <laughs>